When we use the frame in method of a geometry proxy, SwiftUI will calculate the view's current position in the coordinate space we asked for. However, as the view moves, those values will change and SwiftUI will automatically make sure our geometry reader stays updated. Now, previously we used a drag gesture to store the width and height as an at state property. It allows to adjust other properties based on the drag amount to create neat effects. However, with Geometry Reader, we can grab values from a view's environment dynamically, feeding it into absolute or relative position into various modifiers. Even better, you can nest Geometry Readers if needed, so that one can read the geometry for a higher up view, and another one can read the one for something further down the tree. To try making some effects with Geometry Reader, we're going to create a spinning helix effect by creating 50 text views in a vertical scroll view, each of which has an infinite maximum width as they take up all the available screen space. Then apply a 3D rotation based on their position on the screen. So we'll start out making an array of colors in our content view. We'll say our colors is an array of color equal to let's do dot red, dot green, dot blue, dot orange, dot pink, uh, dot purple, and then dot yellow. And then in our view body down here, I'm going to say we have a scroll view. And this thing's going to count from zero up to 50 with some index coming in. Inside there is our geometry reader with a proxy coming in. And now is our text. We'll do row number our index. I'll give this thing a font of title, a frame with a max width of dot infinity and then a background color using one of the colors from our array. So we'll say colors index percent seven. It's X for that X code, index percent seven. So it cycles through it again, and again, and again, red, green, blue, orange, pink, purple, yellow, red, green, blue, orange, pink, purple, yellow, again, and again, and again. I'll then give this whole reader a fixed frame height of 40, like that. And now we want to apply to this some kind of, oops, dot frame, some kind of spinning helix effect, which means adding a rotation 3D effect directly below this background modifier here. We're going to say there's a rotation 3D effect. And the angle is going to be dot degrees. And we'll use our proxies frame in the global namespace and read its minimum Y, so its top edge and divide that by five. Take one fifth of the scrolling amount so it moves more slowly. And the axis is uh, fine at that, although with a whole bunch of extra zeros and some wonky uh, indentation. Uh, there we go. And go ahead and try it out. Just run, run the thing back, see what you think. I press Command R now. And we should see, I can just scroll around and they're moving and spinning constantly in 3D space. It works really, really well. So, as you can see, the ones at the very top, boom, they're dead on straight. The ones at the very bottom, they're of course flipped round, and the ones in the middle are spinning or have some way along the way. That's a neat effect. But it's also problematic because the views only actually reach their natural orientation at the very top of the screen behind the dynamic high of the iPhone 15 Pro here. It's really hard to read. To fix this, we can apply a more complicated rotation 3D effect. It's going to subtract half the height of the main view. That means using a second geometry reader to get the size of the main view. So we're going to wrap our scroll view in a second Geometry Reader. This time I'll call its proxy full view, so we can distinguish the two very nicely. Like that, full view in. Then the rest of the code is the same apart from this rotation 3D effect. This thing needs to subtract half the height of the available space. So we're still going to say use a proxy frame in global min y, it's fine. But we're going to make this slightly more complicated. Again, we're subtracting half that height to work with here. So we'll say our min y minus our full view dot size dot height divided by two, and then divide the result of that 
by 5, like so. And so we're just moving things around a little bit. With that in place, all being well, the views should reach their natural orientation near the center of the screen, as you can see. So as they're scrolling, boom, they're in the center, they align neatly. It's much more natural for human reading purposes, I think. You can see how lovely and fast it is. That's Geometry Reader doing a great job. We can use a similar effect to create a cover flow style scrolling rectangle, which was all the rage in Apple land in the earlier days of iPhone and Mac OS. So we could say, for example, let's delete all this code. Here we could say we have a uh, scroll view going horizontal with shows indicators of false. Inside there, I'll make a H stack with spacing of zero. And then count from four each. Let's do one to 20 with a number coming in. Inside here, this is where our geometry reader is with the proxy coming in. And I'll say our text is number, number, like that. I'll add to this a font of large title so it's nice and clear. Do a little bit of padding. Let's add a background of uh, fixed red is fine. And now we'll do another rotation 3D effect. Now this time, again with a wonky indents, thanks Xcode, um, this time I'm gonna say our, our angle's going to be degrees of minus proxy.frameIn.global.minx, so our left edge. But I want one eighth of that, a very gentle rotation. The axis, firstly fix the indentation like that, and then delete the zeros, otherwise all good. Rotate around the Y axis. I'll then say each of our number areas has a fixed frame. We'll do width 200, height 200. And I'll attach that same size to our geometry reader so it stops expanding to fill all the available space. Let's give that a try. Let's press Command R. Hopefully we'll get, there we go. Like as I'm moving around now, I can flip between views and they spin around beautifully. So that works nicely. These effects are fun effects but they aren't exactly easy. Fortunately, SwiftUI provides better options. Let's look at them in the next video.